in times like these, we need a savior. Isn't that so true? G chord. In times like these, you need a savior. In times like these, you need an anchor. Be very sure. Be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. This rock is Jesus. Yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. Be very sure, be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid in time like these, you need the Bible. In time like these, oh, be not idle, be very sure, be very sure. You're The solid rock In times like these I have a Savior In times like these I have an anchor I'm very sure I'm very sure my anchor holds and grips the solid rock. This rock is Jesus, yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. Be very sure. Be very sure, but your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Are we all very sure this morning? Praise the Lord. Let's go to 93's, our brother Thomas. Amen. Make me more like thee, Lord Jesus. That should be our prayer every, every day. Make me more like thee, Lord. Make me more like thee, Jesus. Make me more like thee. Give me a heart that's filled with love and make me more like thee and again oh make me more like thee jesus make me more like thee give me a heart that's Fill with love and make me more like thee. Praise the Lord, brother. Amen. Make me more like you, Lord. That's the prayer of our hearts. Amen. That we might be like him. 
Amen. Well, God bless each and every one of you. I see my country cousins here. God bless you, Clifford. We've been praying for you. Amen. Our life can change pretty fast. I want to read. I got some prayer requests here. Some of them from last week. And some just come recent here. We want to pray for Clifford Vandale. He's improving. His wife said he's getting better, which is wonderful. We'll keep praying for Mer Mervyn Salinas' daughter. They're w wanting her to rededicate her life to, to the Lord. Prayer for Melvin Ahenikew Jens. I don't know how he's doing, but uh, if he's, we can pray for him this today too. And uh, there's also <clears throat> drug problems with pure and different ones. I know my granddaughter Glenda and my. Yet on my daughter and many others. Let's pray for those that are that are uh, addicted to drugs and alcohol or pleasures of the world, whatever, that they will break loose from that. Tina, Reed, and Tracy have asked prayer for strength, and they they text me and said, could you pray for us? We need strength. And my granddaughter, my little grandson, uh, Brayson, will pray for them, that the Lord will bless them and give them strength. I'm not going to pray for them right now. We'll pray for them at the end of the service. I want to read... 1 John 3. Verse 1 and 2. Behold, <coughs> behold what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Wherefore the world knoweth not us, because it doesn't know him. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. It doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We see him in the Word. The world doesn't know nothing about the Word, which is Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we come to you with the fear of God upon our lives. I pray we'll never lose that fear, that we will fear before you, and yet the love and mercy of God can be bestowed upon us. We just pray that you will be with us today. As we enter into this service, we pray that you will open our hearts and our understanding. In Jesus' name, be with us now. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> okay. That was nice singing. I knew you had it in you when I first seen you standing back there. <laughs> Amen. And Sister Rebecca, that was a beautiful song. Those songs put tears in my eyes this morning. Amen. Okay. I come here with the fear of God upon my life. Every time I get up 
it seems like it's getting to the place where I, I fear so much that I might give the people the wrong impression, the wrong word. I pray that I can say things just exactly the way it was said. Because it's very important and it's very, anybody that goes off, even adds his little thoughts, would face the, the anger of God. His word is so precious because it is him come down in 63 so that that body, spiritual, theophany word can come into us. It was preached and we accept it. And uh, <clears throat> the devil tosses us around. I bought my little book here and I want to read uh, <clears throat> one of the uh, uh, texts or uh, quotes of Brother Branham. It's taken from that message, Ashamed. July 11, 1965, paragraph 186-187. He said, listen carefully. When you pray for people, you apologize to the devil and say, devil, would you please move over and let me? He said, nothing doing. Faith has got muscles like mine. Oh, oops, I think they're gone. <laughs> Hair on the chest. When it speaks, everything else shuts up. Don't go in. You tell the devil, don't go in, Mr. Mr. Devil, would you please move out? You just tell him, get out of here. Get out of our little church. Get out of our lives. I'm a son of God, commissioned of God. Leave them alone. That means leave the people alone. You have no apology to the devil. Nothing to do with him, not ashamed of the word of God, not ashamed of your commission, not ashamed of who you are. Dam's Book of Life, page 23, paragraph 171-173. Let me tell you, lift up your heads, straighten up your chest, and faith has hairs in a chest, like a, a, a strong man. Brother, I mean it's got big muscles. When it speaks, all the worries drop from one side to the other. The devil says, you can't make it. You can't do this. You're ashamed of, to testify. Faith raises up and says, shut up. I've got the floor, amen. That's what you tell the devil every time he tries to put something on you. Faith takes initiative. That's what we need in every pilgrim in the land. Straight up your heads and just stand straight and tell the devil, get out of here. I, I, I put these when I first came in to the message, a few of these quotes. And uh, this morning, <clears throat> I want to look at the stature of the perfect man. That's you. Faith comes in when you receive this message. That's faith taking a hold of God's word. And uh, you go on to virtue, your life changes. Virtue is strength. To be, you accept Jesus and you become a Christian. 
knowledge, things you didn't know before comes in, and a new understanding and a new life comes. And, uh, it, and it, you build up, and uh, that never, the capstone never sat down before until 1963 he came down and capped that with the divine love of God in our hearts. <clears throat> now, I hope you just can give me your undivided attention. This morning, uh, the devil gave me a, a battle and, you know, put in fear. Uh, am I feeding the people? I want you to be fed. I want you to get that knowledge and understanding. And so temperance can come into your life and patience, godliness, and all the seven fruits of the Spirit that you might be filled with God. Having all that is the full fullness of God to a perfect man. You'll be a perfect person as you add one virtue to the other until you have all of them. And uh, somehow I opened this this morning and I bought it. I got another one there. Uh, once in a while I might share something there from there. <coughs> Now, in John 1, 1 John 1, 3, 1 to 12. Oh, we read that already. We wonder what we will be like at the end. I preached, I believe it was the Hebrew book. It, it could be, yeah, I think it's the Hebrew book. I read how, what will we be like at the end? I, those that were here, you probably remember that at the end, you know, Brother Branham was scared to die. Now a prophet, he's got fear too, the devil fights him. He was scared to die. He says, I don't want to be a spirit. I want to be human. I don't want to be a sp spirit just drifting around when I die. Then the Lord, he had a real battle, and the Lord showed him a vision. He got caught up in the spirit, and he went on the other side of those that had gone. He seen many there that he knew. And uh, <clears throat> they were all young people. And, uh, and they were just having a great time. And uh, they, there's somebody there, he didn't say who was talking to him. And uh, young women and young men kept coming and putting their hands around him. He said, my precious brother, my precious brother. They come holding me, hugging me, and saying, my precious brother, and they'd walk away. One young lady came and grabbed Brother Branham and said, my precious brother, started walking away. And this guy talking to him, he says, you remember her? And he says, no. He said, she was past 90 years old when you won her to the Lord. But she was just a young 18-year-old girl on the other side. And he says, these people are real. And from that day on, he desired to go on the other side. He hated this life. It's nothing but trouble. Nothing but temptations, trials, failures, everything. We battle every day. And on that side, we will be having peace. Unspoken, un unfelt here on earth. We'll have a tremendous time. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
we uh, so I got a scripture here that I wrote, 1 Corinthians 15, 44. It is shown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. We have two bodies. That which is inside will have flesh again at the end. But we go different stages. And so the people, he said, people are so afraid of death. If they could only see on the other side. Remember when Sister Hope was dying and Brother Branham was over, laying, over, hugging her like this in the bed there crying. He said, Hope, Hope. And she was drifting off and she died. And he cried and he said, hope, hope. And he, Sister Hope came back to her body. And she, she spoke and said, why did you call me back? Why did you call me back? He says, I can't be with you anymore. I've got to be going. He said, it's beautiful, Billy. You preached about it. You've talked about it. It's beautiful. I have to go. Big birds flying from tree to tree. Beautiful place. She, wanted, she went back and she closed her eyes and went. We don't know what's on the other side, but I'm getting more excited about it. And Brother Henry was standing here this morning, looking at me, sitting where he's sitting. He said, I wonder what will happen after you and I can't go come anymore. You know, we're, we get to the place where we know we have our days numbered. And uh, you must go on. And I don't know what will happen, but it's in the Lord's hands. He says, what body do we have? What kind of a heaven? Look, t let's take a look at Jesus after he resurrected. <clears throat> And uh, you will find it in, in uh, Luke 24, 25, 27, road to Amos. Remember after Jesus was crucified that day, that day he was crucified. In the evening, two of the disciples, there was a, a town maybe like Mount Nebo, a day's journey on foot. There was no cars, no airplanes, no buses, no nothing. They had to walk or go on a donkey, an ox cart. That's the way they traveled them days. Or, and they started walking. And it was getting evening when they were getting close to Amos, the little town. And all of a sudden, a stranger joined them. There was now three of them going. And uh, <clears throat> they said something about what they were talking about. He says, uh, it's about Jesus. He was crucified and died. They crucified him today. And now we're just going back to Amos. And you no, know, you read it. And uh, they walked and they got to Amos and, and uh, the two of disciples stopped and they were going to have a meal or something. And, and that's where they were heading for. And this guy that joined them kept on going as if he's going to keep on going somewhere else. And he said, abide with us. It's, it's getting dark. Have supper with us. 
stay with us for the night. And then so they were going to eat, and he, the stranger took bread, began to break it, and uh, all of a sudden their eyes were open. They seen past that flesh, and they recognized that it was Jesus, but in a different body. See, the devil lives in a body, too. He has to be in a body. We'll come to that later. And Jesus, that theophany, spiritual body of Jesus, which is the word, has to come into flesh. And uh, Jesus appeared to them in different forms many, a few times after he was crucified. <coughs> and every time he came, it was different. Remember, Ma Ma was, was it Mary that went, Martha, that went to the tomb the next morning or something like that, when uh, the third day or whatever, and the tomb, uh, the rock was rolled away. And uh, Jesus' body was gone. Just the clothes were there. But no body. He was gone. And uh, they thought this guy was a garden, gardener looking after the garden, making it, you know, fixing it up all uh, you know how you do your little yard there, you have a little garden, you, you pull the weeds out and you clean it and everything. That's what this guy, they thought that was the guy. And uh, they said, where have they laid him? And he said, Mary. And she looked up. Her eyes were open. It was Jesus in a body, a different body. He always, every time he appeared after he died, it was in a different form. In many different forms, he came to them, different person, uh, per, uh, different person every time. He comes into our dimension and uh, and lives within our bodies. We find out Moses seen him in Theophany. He came to him in, as a Melchizedek. He was crucified. His body ascended to heaven to the Father's throne. And there is, uh, is there yet today. But this was, in, this was way back when he said this. A memorial, oh, okay, I see. Now I'm thinking of a different one. Father's throne and is there yet today, right today. Memorial for the price of sin paid. His body's in heaven yet, but he came with his theophany, spiritual body, and now is, is inside of us as we receive the word. And... Uh, inside of us as we uh, uh, we are the eternal beings just accept this if you can't understand it if you can't explain it just believe it that's what brother Branham said inside of you you are eternal being I have done many funerals and I tell the people that he's not dead. His body is here. In the funeral, I'll point to the body. But he's gone to heaven. Burton lives in this body. But you're not looking at Burton. Burton is inside the character, the person. Inside of you, you are an eternal being. You'll live forever when you've taken Jesus, who is the life. And, uh, and it, I went on to say here, 
So uh, the soul is a person, character, the real us. Body must die. Hebrews 9, 27. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Must have Christ in us. And the only way he can be in us is by word. The word body form, Brother Branham said. <clears throat> Someday the body of Jesus will appear to the bride in a physical form. Right now he's in us. And when he's going to get us out of this world, before the tribulation period sets in, if you miss the rapture that's being in the process right now, you will have to go through the tribulation period. <clears throat> okay. Let's go on here. I've got to hurry a little bit. But the blessed Lord shall always be with him. will have a body like his own glorious body. Live with him. Eat with him. Sit down and dwell with him forever and ever. As the ends of time, eternal ages will roll world without end. That's at the end. Remember that time I went through that Hebrew book? And I think it's Hebrews. Where at the end, we will be the same as we are today. We're going back to the Garden of Eden where he first put man before Eve sinned. And man partook of, of her sin. And we lost eternal life. He said... We bypassed the theophany, but now we're getting it back. Because, okay, that word uh, rapture means, if you look in the dictionary, it defines it as a feeling of intense pleasure and joy. That's where, the, that's what rapture is. And you have to, you have a choice tonight. If you are not prepared to meet that place, no matter how much you go to church, how good a member you are, you're lost until Christ has give you a new life in that darkness that you walk in. This is the valley of the shadow of death that Psalms 23 talks about. Because this is not going to last eternally. And we're in here. This body has to die. We born, get old, die, get in a car accident, die. We have to die somehow. You may be religious, he says. Well, listen, friend. Religion is intellectual. It's just up here. Well, listen, friend. Religion is intellectual. See, all the Cain's children has always had religion. The Jews had a religion. When Jesus came, they rejected salvation. That was their salvation, and they rejected it. They crucified him. The preachers did. What we have today, friends, is, is genuine. Don't let it go. Don't lose it. Read your Bible every day. Read the books if you or listen to the tapes. We have a whole library down there. He says, in the Hebrew book, part two, he says, paragraph four, two, three, he took his body, dead body, from the grave. Listen to this. He took his dead body from the grave on the first day of the week and brought it up to heaven. 
and sat there as the high priest as a memorial set in their perfect forever. He sent the spirit and he tore out of the body the spirit. Right down into the church. Jesus is in us. His body is up there as a memorial that sin has been paid for. If you sinned, it's paid for already. You're free. You're not a sinner. You're a Christian. You're a child of God. The church will have to have the same spirit that was in that body, or it won't dovetail with the resurrection, uh, with it in the resurrection. These two pieces must come together, the flesh and the spirit. They have to come together before you have eternal life. Otherwise, you're only a, a creature of time. At the end, those that miss the rapture, those that miss heaven will have to spend eternity in hell. If this church is perfectly, just exactly, the same spirit that was in Christ, you'll never go in, or you said, unless that happens, you'll never go in the rapture. Brother Branham said one place, your body will listen and obey your confession. Do you confess to be a Christian? If you have, your body will listen to it. You'll get tempted. Remember last Sunday? You'll even fail. You'll do things that's not right. You'll sin and sometimes we do it Willfully. But he says he won't lose you. Once you pass from, you come to Christ, you pass from death unto life. He says, those that you've given me will come. And I will lose nobody. You've come, you've made your decision to serve Jesus. If you fail, if you backslide, it's not going to lose you. You didn't lose salvation. It just means you're going to, he's going to correct you. He's going to correct you. He's not going to lose you. He's not going to let you go. Isn't that wonderful? I, I feel safe in the arms of Jesus. Okay. He went to hell got the keys from the devil, and he preached in paradise. He, he led captivity captive. Those that were, the, the, the people of God that, he cap, uh, that were captive of, of sin, like we were, ca uh, were in captive with sin with this flesh. It fails, it fails, it sins, it makes mistakes. Uh, uh, he's, He's holding us captive because we're, we're in here. Burton's inside this body, and I'm stuck. And he said he led captivity captive. We didn't, when people died, they didn't go up to heaven. They went to paradise. Paradise and hell were side by side. But when Jesus rose, Paradise rose with them. Read Matthew 28. You'll find out that those that were dead, the Old Testament saints, appeared to many. And when he ascended, they ascended with him. But the world knew nothing about it. We have eternal life, brothers and sisters. He rose up the third day, visited the apostles, for 40 days, and on the end of the 40th day, he went right up again. He ascended, and this time, he sent right here. 
Pentecost. He gave, the Holy Spirit came and he worked through the nine gifts of the Spirit. And he kept on, and when he, he got there, he turned the corner, but the Pentecost kept going. He turned the corner, the message came, which is Jesus Christ in word form, and they rejected the same as they did back there. And at the end, what's happening? Coming to the end, we're so close to the physical rapture and tribulation to set in. We're so close to atomic bombs to blow this whole earth to pieces. Just before that, what happens? They go back. Some churches go back to Pentecost. And the Lord says, you don't go back, you keep going forward. Forward. This time, we're finished here. There's no more church ages. There's no more seals. There's no more nothing. You've got to keep going until we're taken home. Amen. I hope that's clear to you. Okay. <clears throat> i got a few minutes left. Just give me your undivided attention. <clears throat> this is important. This is it. Eternal life, if you miss it, don't miss the message. The quotation book, page 103, it talks about the gifts. I had read this before, but I thought I'd read it again. And he said, there will, there's all those gifts, they'll soon be gone, done away with. See, this is where... It's done away with, because the message came only for the bride. It doesn't mean for the world. Only for the bride. That's your wedding garment. But what our church is doing, they're going back to Pentecost. One of the pastors told me, we're not going back to Pentecost as the evidence of the Holy Spirit. So they're going back to Pentecost. But one thing they uphold is they know it's not the evidence of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit moved out and is now in the message. That's the token. It was the token over here, then it moved over here, then it moved over here. Now the token is here. That the Holy Spirit moved out of the blood of Jesus and went to Pentecost. And, okay, I, I'll stop right there. That which is in part shall be done away with. So we went, so we want to the perfect thing. I do believe that the spirit-filled person that lives under his uh, his the altar of God, no doubt, sooner or later, will have an experience of speaking in tongues. And I believe that I spoke in tongues. Brother spoke, she spoke in tongues. And that's to edify ourselves. But it was the least things of the nine spirits. That was the least that, well, let me read it. Because one of these days, uh, will have an experience of speaking with tongues because that's one of the lowest and the least things there is according to Paul's description. If you put them in order, it's the last thing on the line of gifts. i rather have faith, healing, all those other gifts. You know, when I came into this message, for years I spoke in tongues. How many years I was in Pentecost. But when I came into this message, I began to dry away. I didn't put it away. It just kind of left. Gone. 1965. <clears throat> The anointed ones at the end time. How did 
They denied Jesus in that day. Just think of this. How did they deny Jesus and when Jesus came and they denied him? The church denied him. Who did they deny when they denied Jesus? The word. The message of that day. There was a good message here in justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now it's moved on to the message. That's how they denied it, by the word. They, was, they were religious. They taught from their Bible, but denied the present day word. What are they today? The same thing, anointed preaching of the gospel of Pentecost. That's what's happening. But denying the present day promise of the word being vindicated. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do you see it? That's what he says. Congregation says, Amen. In 64, who do you say this is? See, that, the heading of these messages should tell you something. Who do you say this is? There is, is there any here that hasn't received the baptism of the, of the Spirit of God? That's a question. How many never received the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Now you say, Brother Branham, well, I tell you, I shouted once, one time. That's very good. I spoke in tongues once. That's very good too. But still, that ain't what I'm talking about. Always been every age if you can receive the word. Those priests had Jesus beat by a million. Oh, wow. This is really something. Let me read that again. <clears throat> Where was it? Oh, those priests had Jesus beat. A million miles when it comes to the fruits of the Spirit. They were so spiritual. Those priests had Jesus beat a million miles when it comes to the fruits of the Spirit. Gentile, uh, gentle, peaceful, meek, lowly, these priests were really, you would say, godly. They beat Jesus a million miles. This is not quite a, it's heavy. But they didn't have the spirit, that's why. They didn't have the word. He tore the churches up. He kicked them over and tore the people out and called them snakes in the grass. And yet they were gentle, holy, moved gently, and they were so holy. And he kicked them out of the church. Everything. But uh, he was that word. He was that word. That's it. That's it. Believe God. God is the word. Believe it. You're, don't look at the flesh. Look at the spirit that came down. And that picture there, he said that's the first time a supernatural being was ever photographed. I didn't write down where I got this from. I think it's still on who do you say this is. You may be very religious tonight. You may be 
Presbyterian, Methodist, Pentecostal, Nazarene, Pilgrim, Holiness. <coughs> you may be just as religious, go to your church, testify. You may sing and shout and praise God. You bring your tithes to the church. You treat your neighbor right. That don't have one thing to do with your eternal destination. Cain did every bit of it, absolutely. That rich young man had every bit of it. Yet, in eyes, when he died, he opened up his eyes in hell, being in torment. This is a narrow road. You can't be just going like this from ditch to ditch. You've got to stay in the middle of the road. The Bible said that the wheat and the tares came together. That little old wheat set, it's starving for rain. And the briars, the weeds are starving for, when the sun is shining, there's no rain and it gets dry. We go through dry times in our life, in spiritual life, and sometimes we have Abundance of rain coming and God blesses us. And we feel so blessed. But when the rains don't come, the, wheat, the rain, the wheat drops its head like this. The wheat beside it drops its head like this. And when the rain comes, the wheat lifts its head up. I know I'm a farmer. I've seen that. I've seen it come up when the rain comes. Cliff has is, is been a farmer all his life. And the weeds lift up their head and praise God. See, these are parables in the Bible. They'll be anointed once at the end time. Anointed with the Spirit, he said. <coughs> now, where am I? <clears throat> you may be just as religious and go to your church, okay. You, you may treat your neighbor right. That hasn't got one thing to do with your eternal destination. Cain did every bit of it, absolutely. The Bible said the wheat and the tares come together. A little old wheat, it's starving for rain. And the briars too. The rain come, the briars are just as happy, and they get rain as the wheat is. But it's by their fruits you shall know them. Inside you are eternal theophany. You bypassed it, but now it's coming back. That which the, the eternal life Adam had in the Garden of Eden, they lost it when they obeyed Satan and sinned. And we bypassed it, but now it's coming back to the church. We're going to, one of these days, we'll be out of here. The soul that sinneth, it shall die, it says. But what a child of God, if you sin, God will correct you. He might even just take your life. I said, he knows if you're going to come back to the Lord or not. But he's not going to lose you. So what? He takes your life. Snatches it out. You go down the road, you get an accident, gone. You're here one minute, you're gone the next. I'll st I got 11 minutes. 63, indictment. The paragraph 224, 225. They said, you take too much upon yourself. You make yourself God. They put him on the cross. The Holy Ghost today is not a third person. It's God manifested in human flesh. The world looks at us. They see the human flesh, but they can't see the word in you. They'll make fun of it. They'll tease you. They'll do everything to you. 
the Holy Ghost, okay, that by the blood of Jesus Christ to sanctify a life that he may reflect himself through. They crucified the same word made manifest. They, you don't, congregation says amen. The crucifixion of Christ today is, <coughs> is to the people who will deny the vindicated, let me read it again. The crucifixion of Christ today is the people who de will deny the vindicated, manifested Son of God among us, among the people, by his things that he said would take place in this very day by his word. So people have a hard time to receive the word of this day. But it's actually Jesus in you coming into human flesh. I know brothers taking this uh, this song book. <laughs> I'll, I'll read this. This is so good. It's, it's a teach. Pentecostal church is the Laodicean condition. Oh, they still jump and holler and carry on on when the music is beating. When the music stops, or the beatnik music some of them play and call it Christianity, whenever that stops, all glory is gone. If it is the real praise of God, there isn't enough whistles, enough power in the world to stop it. When it, real, when it really comes from God, it don't take music to beat it up. It takes the Spirit of God to come down into it. That's what it, it, it does. They belong, they've long forgot it because they, they've classified the gift of the Holy Ghost Initial, initial evidence of speaking in tongues. And heard, I heard the devils and witches speak in tongues. The Holy Ghost is the word of God in you. Do you get that? The Holy Ghost is the word of God in you that testify itself by accepting that word. Outside of that, it can't be the Holy Ghost. If it says it's the Holy Ghost and denies the word of the Bible, it cannot be the Holy Spirit. That's the evidence, whether you believe it or not. Another, notice another great sign. There's Jews in their homeland. That's completed. Their own nation, their own money. A member of the United Nations, they've got their own army. They got everything. They're in their uh, homeland. This scripture is fulfilled. This day, the scriptures fulfilled. I'll leave it there. God bless you. Thank you for your undivided attention. Stay with the word. Read your Bible if you can get, some people can get the message through their phones. And uh, get in there and read your Bible, compare it with the Bible. You'll find that it, it dovetails every word. Okay, God bless you. Thank you, We're going to stand and sing a hymn here. I was just looking at this picture behind in our songbooks. 
how many people really know what that really stands I showed it to my brother one time. Oh, that's just some phenomena. You know, I think it's one of the greatest signs, talking about signs in these last days. That's one of the greatest signs. But so many people don't know nothing about it. But the little bride knows, but the world out there did got no idea. Let's sing 112. Just a little while. And it'll all be over, eh? We'll try maybe F chord. Hmm. One right key. Let's go to G. Something in the right, maybe my guitar is out of tune. Somehow it went out of tune. It just all oh, went out of tune. I never. I, the devil don't want us to play anymore. <laughs> Even the third string. Next one. Second. Last one. Third one. Yeah. And the next one up. That's all I think, eh? No, it's not in tune. Hmm? It's not in tune. I know it's out. Getting there? False. Huh? Anyway, we'll just sing real loud and we'll cover up the... Soon this life will all be over and the pilgrimage will end. So we'll take our life, be home again with friends. Heaven's gates are standing open, waiting all our entrance there. Some sweet day we're going over All the beauties there to share Oh, just a little while to stay here Just a little while to wait Just a little while to labor In the path that's always straight Just a little more of trouble In this low and sinful state We'll enter heaven's portals, sweeping through the pearly gates. Soon we'll see the light of morning and the new girl begin. Soon we'll hear our heaven come, my children enter in. Then we'll hear the choir of angels singing our new victory song. All the trouble will be ending and we'll live. Just a little while to stay here, just a little while to wait, just a little while to labor in the path that's always straight, just a little more of trouble in this low and sinful state. We'll enter heaven's portal. Sweeping through the pearly gate So we'll meet again our loved ones We'll take them by the hand So we'll press them to our bosom Over in the promised land We'll be home forever Through all eternity What a blessed, blessed morning that eternal morn will be everybody. Oh, just a little while to stay here. Just a little while to wait. Just a little while to labor in the path that's always straight. Just a little more of trouble and slow and sinful stay. 
and we'll enter heaven's portals, sweeping through the pearly gates. Amen. That's a pretty good little song, that one. Amen. We said we'd pray for this at the end of the service. We're going to, I'm going to ask whoever wants prayer to come up here. <clears throat> Lead the way up here. Anybody else wants to come up? We're going to pray for this, and I'm going to ask the deacon uh, get a, a, get a, a chorus to sing after we pray. Okay. <clears throat> Anybody else wants to come and help pray? We're going to pray for here, here. Everybody calls him Pierre, but he doesn't like that. His real name is Gene Iron. I want to give you a picture. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's from drugs. NATO. He's uh, asking for prayer for his drug problem. He's been fighting it for quite a while. He's talked to me about it. And uh, he needs the Holy Spirit to come and give him life and strength to be able to beat it because the devil's going to fight him. He's, he's going to fail and he will eventually give up and just go on and tell them that those drugs kill him. That's what they do. They take your life away. I will pray for Selena and, Ma and Marvin's uh, daughter. I will pray for Clifford, Melvin. I think that's all there is here. Yeah. Okay, let's all of you pray with me. Pray from your heart for this man and I these ones that sick and afflicted. I and believe that this is going to be healed today. Okay. I believe with all my heart that shall be healed today. Yes. yes. Thank you, Jesus. Tracy yes. believes that he's going to be free from it. Thank you, Praise Jesus. God. Now you, your, your confession, your body will obey your confession. Yeah. Heavenly Thank Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I see the tears. Praise you, Jesus. I see the sorrow. Praise you, Jesus. That defeat. I always come. Yes. Praise you, Jesus. So the church. Praise God. For the saints to pray. Praise you, And Jesus. help him with their prayers. Praise you, Jesus. Deliver him. Set him free. Praise you, Jesus. I pray, dear God, that the Holy Spirit. Praise you, Jesus. Will take away that desire. I pray his body will not even. They go through withdrawals but I pray that you won't even have that Precious Jesus. that will be just gone Praise set Jesus. free and be delivered from these drugs Jesus. I've seen him I've snuffed and Precious opened the Jesus. door and I've seen him heating up that drug so he could Jesus. inject it Jesus. and I felt that crying not only him Jesus. my daughter Jesus. My granddaughter. Jesus. Boyfriend. Different Jesus. ones. Jesus. The world is full of drugs, Lord. Jesus. Little children are even taking it already. Precious Jesus. Just young kids. Lord, the Bible tells us that it be as witchcraft at the Jesus. end. People are bewitched by it. And I pray that you will set him free and others Praise that God. are taking it. We Praise pray Jesus. for these young people that being destroyed. Jesus. Young people dying off because they get overdosed. Precious Jesus. 
Jesus. Precious Lord. I don't want to sound like I'm begging, Precious but I do Jesus. pray oh, you Lord will Jesus. deliver those oh, whom Jesus. you know oh, from this <coughs> diabolical habit Jesus, that the body begins to crave for it Jesus, when they don't take it and they have to spend their last penny to Jesus. get another fix. Jesus, oh God, what a Lord terrible Jesus. life that is. Just as he goes, I pray that he'll Precious find a Jesus. new life in him. Yes, he's got his Bible and he's Jesus. reading it. Oh, Lord, Jesus. I know he's been hungry for it for Jesus. some time. Jesus. Now he's come forward publicly, publicly, Precious confessing Jesus. that he needs deliverance. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. We accept it. We believe it. Precious Jesus. In Jesus' precious name. Praise God. Be with each and every one that's been mentioned. And others. Amen. And amen. And Heavenly Father, I pray that you will bless each one as we go home to our separate places. Be with each one of us. Help us to stay close, to read our Bibles and pray every day. Jesus. When I wake up at night, I'm praying. Jesus. Lord, I pray that you will just Jesus. be with us as we go. Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen, amen and amen. amen. Brother Henry is going to sing a song. And I want prayer for my niece and her husband. And if you'll come Praise to the Lord. God. Okay. Jesus. Jesus. Sister Rebecca has a beautiful niece and her husband. And they don't know the Lord, and she's going to, she's asking for prayer for them. Amen. Heavenly Father, Jesus. we pray for this young lady, beautiful oh young man, God. woman, Touch. and this young, and uh, the young man, Lord. I pray yes, that they will Jesus. come to you, yes, Lord that Jesus. you will speak to their speak heart to and them draw Lord. them unto thyself. For no man yes. can come to you unless you draw them. Jesus. We pray that the hand of God, yes, our prayers will move the hand of God to draw yes. them. In Jesus' name. I pray oh, for my Jesus. friends. Oh. I pray for my relatives, my cousins. Yes, Lord, I've got many relatives oh, out Jesus. there. Oh. Draw somebody, Lord. Oh. Yes, Bring Jesus. them in. And I pray for my sister Jesus. in Balfour. Her Jesus. children are so oh, kind of just kind of messed up in some ways. And I pray, dear God, for those Jesus. children, wonderful young people. Our, I pray for the families of each member yes, here today. Lord God. That if they got family out Jesus. there, they're yes. going to end up in a burning hell. Lord, yes, unless Lord, you draw Jesus. them. Jesus. We pray for our relatives, Jesus. our friends, oh, our neighbors. Lord, in Jesus' oh, name, we Lord. pray for the souls of these people. Yes, Lord. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God Thank bless you. Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Oh, join me, 148. To get a touch from the Lord is so real. To get a touch from the Lord is so real. If you draw nigh to Him, He will draw nigh to you. To get a touch from the Lord is so real. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus is coming, is coming again. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus is coming again. To get a touch, the Lord is so real. To get a touch from the Lord is so real. If you draw nigh to Him, 
he will draw nigh to you to get a touch from the Lord is so real. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus is coming, is coming again. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus is coming again. Just let's just sing 39. Jeet chord, sister. We'll give the glory to Jesus. We'll give the glory to Jesus. My guitar is over again. When you, you play. We'll give the glory to Jesus and tell of his love, and tell of his love. We'll give the glory to Jesus and tell of his wonderful love. Let's sing it again. We'll give the glory to Jesus and tell of his love and tell of his love we'll give the glory to Jesus and tell of his wonderful love we thank you Heavenly Father we thank you for your love Lord we thank you for the message today that you gave us, Lord. And I just pray for those who come to the altar today, Lord. Meet those needs of prayer requests, Lord. Just help us, Lord, each day. Help us along the way, Lord. I know you're coming soon. Help us to be ready, to be prepared, Lord. We know that day is coming soon. Just walk with us, Lord, and go with us and help us in the days to come. And we'll sure to give you all the glory. Go with us now, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Dismissed. Praise the Lord.